You could purchase the 1099s and just fill them out based on this report fairly easily, or you might wanna process them using QuickBooks. So if I go to the first tab here, just to look at that processing uh, setup, I'm gonna close this. I don't know what it's doing there. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna open up the hamburger and you can go into the taxes on the left-hand side. You've got sales tax and then you got the 1099 filing. So here's your little kind of 1099 filing wizard. I'll just go through it quickly here. It says, get ready to file your 1099 forms. This year, there are some changes to 1099 filing process. We'll walk you through. So you could e-file the 1099s with the IRS on your behalf. Uh, we e-deliver the 1099s. So that means you're responsible to give the 1099s to the, uh, to the person you paid and to the IRS. And then we print and mail copies of the 1099 to your contractors. So let's just go through their process here. Again, you don't have to go through QuickBooks to do this. You might do this, you know, just buy the forms and do it. But we're gonna say, I'm gonna make a different address. I'm just picking an address. This is a Beverly Hills address for a home for sale for $20 million. Uh, 9935 Kip Drive. We're gonna say this is Beverly Hills, California. 902210, 90210, boom. And I'll save it. And then the phone number, I'm just gonna say it's 555-555-5555. It doesn't like that phone number. How about 310-291-199? Let's do that. Let's save it. And the tax code I'm gonna say is 95 tab. Dit, 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 dit. And until it doesn't let me do that last bit. So that's the tax code. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, okay, let's save it. And then that's gonna be, you know, our information that we would, we, we would need here. This would be our identification number, not the, not the uh, people were 1099. And then it says, map your QuickBook contractor payments to 1099 boxes. So first select the, the check box for each type of contractor payment you uh, record last year. Each payment type corresponds to a box on the IRS form 1099 NEC and 1099 miscellaneous. Now, if you wanna look at those forms, you can go to irs.gov and you can just type in 1099 uh, NEC just to check it out. And so there it is, boom, you can look at the, you can look at what it looks like and the instructions for it. So you can't really print this out and use it. You'd have to actually purchase the 1099s if you want to do it by hand, but you know, you can get an idea there's box one. That's the most common 1099. If I did that again and I said into it, I'm sorry, not into it. I'm going to irs.gov. I want the 1099 miscellaneous and we can go into that one and form 1099 miscellaneous. This is what this one looks like. now. The non-employee compensation used to be on this miscellaneous form, but now it's got like its own form. So this is the most common one that you would be using. And then other kinds of payments would be going here. That's the general idea. Okay, so that's what they're, that's what they're trying to do here. And so then for each payment type select, uh, selected, select all the QuickBooks expense accounts you used last year. So if you're not sure which expense accounts to use, you can run a report. Okay, so common payment types. So this would be the most common. So most of the time you, you would choose the non-employee compensation and you can choose the payment type. It would be oftentimes something like contractor payment that you would make to them. But maybe you just choose all of them, right? For if that's the only type of 1099 that you're issuing because you probably just marked off the expense account as contractor payment or something like that. But you might say, hey, I'm just gonna say any expense account that that I paid for someone who's under the threshold is gonna be going to this, this format of non-employee compensation. Now, if you have a more complex situation, then that's that's where you can kind of differentiate. So if I had a situation where I had to issue a 1099 on, the NEC form, as well as a 1099 on the miscellaneous form, then how do I differentiate between those two? I, I know I have to 1099 both of them, but I differentiate between which box or which 1099 by selecting the account. So if I had to issue rents 
then I would say that the expense account down here would be rents. I would still mark them off, the vendor, as being someone I have to issue a 1099 for, but I'm gonna apply the expense account of rent expense, and, and therefore it should pick the right 1099 and box to check off. So that's how it kind of works. But for most people, you just got that non-employee compensation. And then if I go to the next, I can review and I can say, okay, does this match up? And, and I can tie this out to my report that I generated and say, okay, that if that matches out, then I can basically continue here. And then uh, check that the payment add up. Only those contractors you paid above the threshold, $600. So notice, I don't, it looks like we didn't have any that were paid over the 600. There's where the threshold is applied. It's a pretty low threshold. So even though there's a $600 threshold, that's why when you add the vendors, you don't really want to think about the dollar amount. You want to make sure you check them off if they're if they're going to be subject to a 1099, whether they're above or below the threshold, and then let the system apply the threshold requirement right here. Or when you do them by hand, you apply the threshold re requirement when you process. And then you can finish the, the 1099s. And obviously, this is a demo prop a problem. So there's an issue with issuing them through the system here. So that's the general idea.